July 24th, and here's what's happening in Ukraine. So I'm going to start with this. Zelensky promises Ukraine will not give up as Russian invasion enters its sixth month. I mean, I, I'm, I can hardly believe that this is where we are. Six months into the war, is it the beginning of the sixth month. I remember it like day 20 and day 30 and, you know, two months in thinking, wow, two months, but six months. Now, Zelensky has just been amazing in many regards as a leader, but that he has lasted six months or, or five months at the beginning of the six months is just a testament to what he's been able to do to rally Ukraine uh, against an army that's three times its size, many times its strength. Um, it's, it's just phenomenal. Okay, so we're going to look at the British military uh, intelligence update, and it said a couple of interesting things. In the Donbas, uh, small-scale Russian offensive actions remain focused on the Bakhmut axis. Well, where is that? Bakhmut is down here. If This is um, Severodonetsk and Lusychansk and uh, Slovyansk, and Bakhmut is down here. So the Russians are trying to slowly move west across this axis, and, and that's what they want to do in order to squeeze uh, more territory out of the Ukrainians. Okay, so that's where they're what they're doing there. But Lavrov, the foreign minister, claimed that the operation now included new additional areas, including the Ukrainian regions of Kherson and Zaporizhia, as a result of Western countries supplying longer range weapons to Ukraine. Now, that's a lie. I mean, it was always kind of baked in. That's why they uh, attacked on so many axes at the very beginning, because they were trying to roll over the whole country. Uh, the Ministry of Defense in Britain said this is almost certainly not true. Russia has not expanded its war. Maintaining long-term control of these areas was almost certainly an original goal of the invasion. There is a realistic possibility that Lavrov made the comments to pave the way for referenda that's going to take place sometime in the fall. And I think that's probably what's going on. Okay, this is Radio Free Europe. They said Ukraine uh, proceeds to implement grain deal despite attack on Odessa, shelling of uh, numerous towns. Okay, so if you're not paying attention, uh, two days ago, the Russians created a, uh, a, a deal with the Ukrainians and the Turks and under the umbrella of the United Nations to allow grain shipments from Ukraine as well as grain from Russia to be exported to avert a food crisis. Then yesterday, the Russians shelled Odessa, which is where the port, major port was, where the food was supposed to be coming from. Actually, not, not just shelled, sent two caliber missiles, cruise missiles, at Odessa, um, which they had 12 hours from the time that the deal was signed until Russia attacked and violated the deal. Ukraine's military reported Russian shelling in numerous locations. Uh, Russian forces uh, attempted to seize a power plant in one part of the country and they were rebuffed. But the big news here was that Russia used these two caliber missiles on July 23rd, that's yesterday, to strike near a pumping station at the Odessa airport. Now, at the same time, the foreign minister, a sp foreign ministry spokesman who lies incessantly, um, I mean, just read Western press. Don't believe me. Read Western press, then read what she says in Russian press. And it's it's bizarre. It's like two different worlds. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova acknowledged the missile strikes, saying that on July 24th, they had destroyed military infrastructure at the Odessa port. She added without evidence that the high-precision strike had destroyed a Ukrainian naval patrol boat. It didn't. It struck a pumping station, but they lie, and then they lie, and then they lie, and they feel that they can get away with it. Okay, here's another article. Ukrainian military attack leaves 54 Russian soldiers dead, three tanks destroyed. That's an attack in Kherson. This is the Ukrainian counteroffensive. But I want to get to this. Today's Russian missile attack in Odessa on our port is a cynical one. This is what um, uh, Zelensky says here. In this, in his daily speeches, and he gives these each day, this is yesterday. Today's Russian attack on Odessa on our port is a cynical one, and it was also a blow to the political positions of Russia itself. If anyone in the world could still say that some kind of dialogue with it, with Russia, some kind of agreements are needed, see what is happening. Today's caliber missiles have destroyed the very possibility for such statements. They violated the agreement in 12 hours. So what good is any peace negotiation or any peace treaty unless it is brought by the force of arms and he's made this case now for a number of months okay 
Ukrainian war, Russia denies causing the global food crisis. Sergei Lavrov is in Cairo and he's meeting with them there and he's saying, look, it's the, the West being aggressive. It's not about Ukraine. It's about they wanted to have their own world order. And he, he talks about this really interesting thing. Lavrov says his country has always, quote, sincerely supported Africans in their struggle for a freedom from the colonial yoke. Now, why is he talking like that? Well, he can't play in the Western sandbox anymore. So now what Lavrov and what Russia is doing is trying to find other partners because he can't do Europe anymore. So they're looking to Asia and looking to Africa. And this language of the colonial yoke, it, it was intriguing. So I looked it up typed in Russian colonization Africa. The list of European empires that colonized Africa, one was glaringly absent, Russia. Though the Russian Empire was a well-established imperialist force by the 19th century, it did not rush to colonize Africa. No, what they did was colonize places like Ukraine, just on the periphery, and try to take them. That's Novorossia. That's what the Ukrainian land and territory. Okay, Lavrov, another article. Egypt, he's in Egypt, is one of the world's top wheat importers. They bought 80% of its wheat from Russia and Ukraine last year. And so it's tie, you know, torn between the West and Russia. Global commodity prices have soared. We know that Lavrov's tour will take him to Uganda and Ethiopia and Congo because, again, there's a, uh, a, a real charm offensive by Russia to, you know, what's going on in, in other countries so that they can have this uh, closer agreement and closer relationship to trade things. Now, here, this is interesting. This goes back to the previous article. Turkey, which helped broker the accord allowing exports to resume, said immediately after the double cruise missile hit on the strategic southern port, that's Odessa, the, what we were just talking about, that it had received assurances from Moscow that Russian forces were not responsible. So they lied to the Turks. But Russia's defense ministry said on Sunday that the strikes had destroyed a naval vessel and arms delivered by Washington. What? <laughs> High precision, long range missiles launched from the sea destroyed a docked Ukrainian warship and a stockpile of anti ship missiles delivered by the U.S. through the Black Sea? Really? You're going to go that way instead of overland through Poland? Come on. So they lie and then they lie and then they lie. Okay, uh, last couple of articles. So, why did Ukraine even, or not Ukraine. Ukraine wants to export its grain. Why did Russia even agree to this anyway? Well, um, because it's going to help them as well. They're going to be able to export their own food. Moscow would not have agreed to Friday's deal unblocking Ukrainian grain exports if the issue of freeing up Russian exports had not been resolved. Moscow is now counting on the UN to stick to its promise. This is RT, but it's, it's a legit article. Another RT article brought some more clarity from it. There are delivery problems, insurance problems, payment problems, freight problems, and all these things will make prices go up. So the main thing I foresee is that these difficulties will ease and transaction prices will come down. So yeah, the sanction, the Western sanctions, anything dealing with food and transport of food will be kind of removed so that Russia can put out its grain, Ukraine can put out its grain, and the rest of the world that's dependent on that will not starve. Okay, and the AP... This is another uh, Russia visit, uh, foreign minister visits Egypt, and he talks about uh, Lavrov said he discussed Russia's military operation. Lavrov laid the brain, uh, blame on Ukraine for the rupture of earlier peace talks. Ukraine, Ukrainian authorities, from the president to his innumerable advisor, constantly say that there will be no negotiations until Ukraine defeats Russia on the battlefield for a good reason. Twelve hours and you violated this last agreement. Okay, so that's that's what's going on there. And then finally, I want to close with Zelensky's speech today, where he talked about uh, yeah, this is just this is great stuff. Even the occupiers admit that we will win. We hear it in their conversations all the time, in what they tell their loved ones when they contact them. Therefore, we do not slow down. And as every day for five months, we are doing everything possible to inflict the greatest possible losses on the enemy and go to gather so much as much support as possible for Ukraine. And this guy has done a masterful job. This right here is a leader like you will not see for another generation.